And not only has my co-commentator Jim Watts sparred with both of these, but we've also got the manager Thank Terry you. Lawless here, who used to handle both of them to give us an opinion. So the opening round scheduled, of course, for 12. And in terms of purse money, the precedence goes to the European champion, considered uh, the more prestigious title. First time that they fought, having had what they say probably hundreds of rounds when they were with the Lawless camp, and now going their separate ways. And uh, Hannigan's manager, Mickey Duff, well known, of course, in the fight game, has flown in, especially from uh, Florida, where he looks after John Mugabe to be in the corner with Hannigan tonight. It's, it's his first one officially under his management. So we'll see if it lives up to the tag of the grudge fight. There's certainly been some verbals, and if they can fight as well as they've been talking, we should be in for a good championship. So I love these black sequin shorts there of Hannigan with the honey on them, and uh, Mitty also had his name on the gold shorts. Well, I've always thought all along that perhaps this fight would not depend solely on skill, but on which man can really impose his will on the other. Because they don't have to go looking for any sort of scouting reports. They, they know how they fight. They've had so many sparring sessions, and they were a, a bit spiteful, I understand. Well, Jim, this must bring back old times for you, having boxed with these boys in the Royalist Gymnasium in Canning Town in London. Yeah, I've spent a lot of rounds with both of them, uh, mainly Mitty. Uh, the main difference I'd say between the, the two of them, uh, Hannigan is probably a little bit more difficult to catch with punches than Mitty. Uh, that's what I found anyway. But Mitty's getting through already. This is a typical start from Mitty. He's trying to push the opponent back. Uh, Hannigan's been trying the clever stuff already, nice little uppercuts. But uh, a good start, we couldn't have complained, a, a good start to the fight. There's a good left hook there for Mitty, that's always been his pet punch, I think. Well, any punch that works is, is a pet punch, but he, he does like the left hook. Unbeaten, remember now, Hannigan. Box with the London Fisher Club, and Mitty box with the London Repton Club. And I think it's the first fight between West Indians, surely, for the European Championship. I certainly can't remember one, anyway. John Coyle from the Midlands appointed the official referee. And it's the full point marking, not the traditional British half points. Well, it's a good opening round, this. They're not larking about. Well, I think you get the impression they're pleased to get that one over with, and the, I would say that was a signal from Hannigan that they're quite well pleased with the opening round anyway. Get a bit of some of that carefully nurtured hate. There's the tale of tapes, as they call them in America, just a rundown now of Hannigan, and he's boxed in America, and he's, uh, he's won there. And as I say, he's got Mickey Duff working in his corner in the in the black outfit on the outside of the ropes and inside is experienced second Denny Mancini. So over there in Sylvester Mitty's corner, there's the rundown for him. Knocking on in age terms, but uh, it took some time out of the ring and has had championship cracks before, but uh, he's coming a bit late in life now, isn't he? And he's, he's been doing it very well, I must say, Mitty. And I have to be careful what I say about him because he's not bad at the old verbal ear bashings. Second round, this. round two. Second round, and a bit of quality, fast. It's welterweight boxing there. These, remember, in the latest ratings now by the World Boxing Council and Association, which we've only seen this week, Hannigan's come in at four, and Midigan at Mitty at seven. And there aren't many championships you'll see with British, Commonwealth, European at stake with two genuine contenders for the championship. Remember, it's the Americans who rate them. Well, Americans and South Americans, basically. So these two fellows are really looking now for a shot at the World of Eight Championship of the World, because it's the fight traders all say that Donald Curry and Milton McCrory, when they settle their argument, will give up the championship, and these fellows are in the shake-up. 
the, the curry McCrory fight, by the way, you will also be able to see on ITV on Saturday week. Well, it's a question of out-thinking as well as out-punching each other, where I feel they, they might have the needle with each other, but there's no lack of respect for boxing in Bolivia, I'm sure of that. spared themselves in training for this one, you can tell by the sharpness and I love the trim haircuts as well, although you don't have to go in training to get your hair cut. What do you think? Yeah, well the punches already are very good, I get the impression Hunnigan's punches are a little bit sharper, a little bit more powerful at this stage. Yeah, he's just missed uh, Mitty's whisker a couple of times with nice looking uppercuts, there he is, more of a stumble than a knockdown, but... Uh, oh, he won't like oh, that, Mitty did interrupt you, he's going to give him... The standing mandatory eight count, which is the European rules, by the way. But, well, I thought a punch... standing count as such, but he's... I didn't agree with that, did you? Well, well a punch did knock... I mean, he, he stumbled, but a punch knocked him over, so I suppose the referee's entitled to give him a count. But uh, no way was he hurt. But uh, Hunnigan's looking for him early. Under European rules, they can actually give a standing count without going down, but no British referee has yet done that in the European Championship. And uh, I'm assured that Mr John Cole will not probably use that rule. But he has to take a man of two eight, and they don't do that in British Championship fights. Well, we've always known that uh, Lloyd adelman has got a good punch variety. He brings him in from all angles. He's having a good round there in round two. Just having a walk round there, Hunnigan, more or less unwinding. I, don't, I think he didn't. He was not really going to the wrong corner. He knew exactly what he was doing. So there you are, I'm just uh, peering over the lady with the rounds board, and then replay, Jim. Yeah, well, Hunnigan's given the impression that he's a little bit stronger than Mitty at the moment. It's like a, a full welter against See, look, a light welter. I doubt yeah. whether he really took the punt there. He half fell across him, didn't he? But there you are, it counts as a knockdown. He'll debate that one for the rest of his career, old Sylvester. He'll have a word or a hundred to say about that, won't he? Uh, almost a familiar face on television these days. Ernie Fossey, the matchmaker and trainer. Same counseling uh, Mitty. As I say, they were both formerly with the Terry Lawless camp. So round three. And uh, the European challenger, Mitty in gold. And the British and Commonwealth challenger, Hunnigan in black sequin. It's certainly a good second round there for Hunnigan. Yeah, it has what looked a bit sharp and a bit stronger, which I think might be quite significant. Uh, Hunnigan has been a welterweight you know, all his pro career. Uh, Mickey has been a lightweight, a light welterweight, and now a welterweight. I don't know if that's going to make a big difference. But the Hunnigan certainly looked a little bit stronger in the second round. Silvetz, as always say, can react to any given situation, and he's going to need to. Because it's Hunnigan well on top, and Mitty, I don't think, has ever been floored as a professional, and I think I've seen nearly all his fights. And they're really screaming there in Hunnigan's corner, and Mickey Dove, I can see, saying to Hunnigan, box, stick the left hand out, set the man up. Let's see now with the old boxing head of Mickey can weather this, uh, Mitty I should say, could weather this storm. <laughs> to use one of his typical phrases, he said, I might just old man him out of it. 